bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I am here with a very exciting announcement video and that is for a readathon that Katie from Books and Things and I will be hosting in the month of July. We're calling it Jane Austen July because we are reading books about and by Jane Austen this month. Jane Austen is an amazing amazing author. She is absolutely one of my favorite authors. Her works were written and published about 200 years ago, but they are still relevant today, and her characters still resonate with readers all around the world. So if you have not read any Jane Austen, now is your excuse to. If you love Jane Austen, now is your chance to celebrate your love of her and her works with us. So there are a whole bunch of challenges for this readathon that I will quickly rattle off for you, and then I will give you some recommendations Challenge one, read one of Jane Austen's main six novels. Um, this one is the main challenge and really the only one that is required to join this readathon. Uh, the six main novels in absolutely no particular order are Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey, and Mansfield Park. Challenge two, read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. Challenge three, read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time period, the Georgian or Regency era. Challenge four, read a modern retelling of a Jane Austen book. Challenge five, read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen, so someone who was publishing in her lifetime and you can give or take a few years on that one. Challenge six, watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. And challenge seven, watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. So if you're all set with those challenges, you can go ahead and get your TBR ready, or you can stick around and hear all of the recommendations I have for these challenges. So the first challenge, I already said all of the books, and again, that is the only challenge that is sort of mandatory to join the readathon because uh, if you are celebrating Jane Austen and you're not reading one of her novels, what are you doing? So for question two, you should read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. And you may or may not know what she wrote besides her main six novels. But I would recommend her Juvenalia, shorter works like Lady Susan, which is absolutely fantastic and I highly, highly recommend that you all read it. Um, it is about Lady Susan Vernon, who is a dislikable and slightly different Jane Austen heroine than the typical Jane Austen heroine, but she's absolutely delightful to read about, and I've done a whole video on that that I will link above and down below for your viewing pleasure. Or you could read Jane Austen's unfinished works like Sanditon or The Watsons, or you could read her letters and her journals. So there's plenty to choose from. For challenge number three, reading a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time period, which is the Georgian or Regency era. I have a few nonfiction books that are on my shelves, but I think I'm going to go to the library and do a whole Jane Austen nonfiction haul that I will share with you. But the ones on my shelves are What Matters in Jane Austen, 20 Crucial Puzzles Solved by John Mullen, and I believe I've talked about all of these briefly before on my channel, but I still will share them with you for those of you who may be newer to the channel. And I have Jane's Fame by Claire Harmon, How Jane Austen Conquered the World. And the last nonfiction I have on my shelves is Jane Austen's England, Daily Life in the Georgian and Regency Periods by Roy and Leslie Adkins. So I will have many more nonfiction books to share with you soon once I go to my library and check out some of the other nonfiction that's available. So for challenge four, read a modern retelling of a Jane Austen book, I have done a little research and have come up with a bunch of retellings. I am not one for retellings. I find that if you're going to read a retelling of a book, you may as well just read the original because chances are the retelling isn't going to live up to the original but I believe that these books that I'm about to mention really try. And so the first one is Eligible by Curtis Sittenfeld. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. Then there's The Jane Austen Project by Kathleen A. Flynn. And I believe this one has to do with Jane Austen and time travel, which seem like a very strange combination. But it's about a character who travels back in time to retrieve a finished manuscript of Jane Austen's otherwise unfinished The Watsons. 
So this book has apparently been compared to Jasper Ford's Thursday Next novels for obvious reasons, so I'm really excited about that one. Then there is the classic Pride and Prejudice retelling, Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding, which you'll note is both a book and a movie later on in this video. Does this one really need an introduction? It's about a 32 year old who decides to take control of her life, like reduce the circumference of each thigh by 1.5 inches, visit the gym three times a week, not just to buy a sandwich, and form a functional relationship with a responsible adult and learn to program the VCR. Oh, and start a diary, of course, because it is Bridget Jones's diary. So it's supposed to be an endearingly self-deprecating and really fun read. The next one is Austin Land by Shannon Hale, which is the second one, which you'll note is both a book and later on a movie in this video. And then there's Jane of Austin, as in A-U-S-T-I-N, like Austin, Texas. It's a novel of sweet tea and sensibility by Hilary Manton Lodge, and it's supposed to be a modern retelling of Sense and Sensibility. It's about two broke adult sisters and their sweet little sister who flee expensive San Francisco and set up a new tea shop in Austin, Texas. And next is Unequal Affections by Lara S. Ormiston. This book apparently explores what would have happened if Elizabeth Bennet had accepted a proposal that occurs before the end of Pride and Prejudice. It sounds like a really promising and interesting book. Of course, it also seems like it focuses exclusively on the romance portion of Jane Austen, but we'll excuse it because it sounds fascinating. And last but not least, because there are tons more of these and I just did not think I should make this video eons and eons of minutes long, is Longbourn by Joe Baker. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling from the perspective of the servants at the Bennett home. So most of these are actually Pride and Prejudice retellings, but there are definitely other retellings out there. And you can just research this for hours. Trust me, I've done it. So for challenge five, read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen, someone publishing in her lifetime, give or take a few years. Now, I mostly read Victorian literature and I rarely read anything earlier than the Victorian period besides Jane Austen, so learning about Jane Austen's contemporaries was really interesting for me. There is Mariah Edgeworth, Frances Burney, who wrote Evelina, Susan Edmonstone Farrier, who I recently read her book called Marriage, which I did a whole video on, and you should definitely check it out. I'll link it above and down below. There's Charlotte Lennox, who I really don't know much about and would like to do a little more research on, to be honest. There's Sir Walter Scott and Samuel Richardson, of course, who were two very, very prominent and famous authors of the time period. So if you're interested in checking out any of those authors and some of their works, I definitely, definitely recommend that you do because they are what would have influenced Jane Austen at the time that she was writing and people who may have shared her views or had different views on the society at the time period. So challenge number six is watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book and I have a lot of them on this list. It's mostly me naming dates and books but I will leave links to the trailers in the description down below because these are fantastic and if you are craving a Jane Austen novel but don't have time to read a full one, these are sort of the next best thing. There is the classic gold standard Pride and Prejudice 1995 BBC miniseries with Colin Firth. If you have not watched any direct screen adaptations of Jane Austen's books, this one is like number one and I highly recommend that you check it out. It is basically the book in video form. It is beautiful. Work of genius. Then of course there's the 2005 Pride and Prejudice with Kira Knightley, just in case you don't have four hours to watch the Colin Firth version. There's a 1995 Sense and Sensibility with Kate Winslet as Marianne Dashwood, and a 1995 BBC version of Persuasion to check out. There's also a 2009 Emma, which is a BBC miniseries, and a 2007 Northanger Abbey, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. I love J.J. Field as Henry Tilney. There's also the 2008 BBC miniseries of Sense and Sensibility, and a 2007 version of Persuasion. There's also a 1996 version of Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow, 
And last but not least, there's a 1999 and 2007 version of Mansfield Park available. So I will try to find trailers for all of these and link them in the description down below because watching the trailers is much more exciting than hearing me ramble on about them. And challenge number seven, watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. I would be remiss without mentioning the 1995 cult favorite Clueless. I love this movie and I am tempted to call it one of the best Jane Austen adaptations ever. Ever. Alicia Silverstone's Cher Horowitz truly captures the essence of Jane Austen's character Emma. She's meddlesome, she's privileged, but she's also incredibly endearing. There are so many smart choices that this movie makes, and one of these days I need to reread Emma and then quickly watch Clueless and do a full-on analysis of how amazing and genius this adaptation truly is. Then there's the 2001 Bridget Jones's Diary, which I've mentioned before in book form in this video, but I've never actually read the book, I've only watched the movie, and it sequels many a time. So if you're in the mood for a good rom-com, this is an excellent choice. The next one I want to briefly discuss is a 2004 movie called Bride and Prejudice, which is a Bollywood version of Pride and Prejudice. It swaps out Jane Austen's time period's rigid social class system for race. Specifically, there's a white Mr. Darcy and an Indian version of Lizzie Bennet. And last but not least, I want to discuss the 2013 movie Austenland. So this is a book as well, I discussed it before earlier in this video. I have not read the book, but I have watched the movie, and I absolutely love this movie. Literally the first time I finished this movie, I got up, grabbed a snack, and started watching it all over again. It's one that people criticize rather harshly, saying that it suggests all Austin fans are lovesick spinster types with teacup collections and an attraction to anything male in period attire. Basically, in short, desperate women. But I actually thought that it played with the conventions of a typical rom-com in really interesting ways. While romance isn't everything in Jane Austen novels, I personally credit Austen with developing the archetypes for our modern love stories. There are some who say every rom-com can literally be reduced to the plot of a Jane Austen novel, and I think that is a bit overly reductive, but I think that this movie is more self-aware than people give it credit for. It straddles this fine line between adhering to traditional stereotypes of both rom-coms and Jane Austen fans and drawing our attention to the ridiculousness of those stereotypes. So I absolutely love this movie. I highly recommend that you all watch it because it is severely, severely underrated. And yes, I think I have made it through the recommendations. So I feel like that was really long. If you are still here, yay. I would love to know in the description down below what is your favorite Jane Austen novel? What Jane Austen novel do you think you will be reading for July? If you are interested in joining this with us, uh, please check out Katie's announcement video as well. And both Katie and I will be posting a TBR soon. And I have a lot of video ideas, including that nonfiction haul I was discussing. And maybe I'll talk more about Jane Austen and the rom-com. Um, the romantic comedy. Let me know if you're interested in hearing a little more about that. I feel like I also had other video ideas, but I don't have my little notebook in front of me. Thank you so much for watching, and I am really excited to read some books by and about Jane Austen with you in July. Bye! <laughs>